let's say I'm listening to your podcast and it's just notable quotable after notable quotable after notable quotable. I'm like, you know what? As I'm listening to this podcast, I'm limiting myself to four. That is it. So then once those four are done, every other piece of content that you say that really triggers something in, in me and inspires me, I now have to compare it against one of the other four to see which one I'm going to ditch. Cause I've maxed myself. I've made my overwhelm limit four. Mm -hmm. Wits and Weights community, welcome to another episode of the Wits and Weights podcast. We have back on the show for a record third time, <laughs> Mr. Carl J. Perryman, host of the Inspired by Impact podcast and one of my closest brothers from another mother. Carl recently released a series of episodes about Men's Mental Health Month for November, covering everything from purpose to relationships to fitness and, and lots more. So subscribe to his show to check those out. And in one of the shows, it was on November 16, titled, What are the Best Ways to Use Physical Fitness to Strengthen Your Mental Health? Carl had me on along with Paul Salter, and we discussed the very important concept of intentionality, of being intentional, deliberate, and directive with your actions after you hear something notable, helpful, inspirational, or profound in some way. What exactly are you, the listener? Yes, you, the listener, right now doing with all this content you consume. If you're an avid podcast listener, like I am, I've got dozens, if not hundreds in my feed. <laughs> Perhaps that you've, you've been shows before, even Wits and Weights, which I'm grateful for. But then are you integrating that information actively into your life, not just passively and then moving on to the next episode or video or distraction? Today, we're going to help you out. Carl is a master at implementing information and is also a regular listener of this podcast. And he is going to give you concrete examples of how he used the takeaways from a few of our earlier episodes and took action. Carl is going to demonstrate a very effective method he calls the mental muscle up or MMU to give you the exact steps you can take to do this yourself. And all I ask is that you try it with this very episode. Carl, my brother. I'm always excited to have you back. Welcome, welcome back. <laughs> I'm excited to be here as well. And I wanted to pick apart that uh, intro a little bit, but of course you've just completely blown it out of the park. So thank you for that. And thank you for putting uh, just a tiny bit of pressure on me for the, uh, for the MMU. Cause I didn't realize I was signed up for a workout here, but actually I yeah. <laughs> we're, we're all good. We're all good. I, 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 I'm your coach in this process, man. You're not going to yep. get away from it. You, you know? are, you are. I love it. <laughs> and, I love it. Who, who also learns from you every day. And, and I'm really excited because you're, you're running a challenge now in parallel with our 21-day uh, challenge. You're yeah. doing a 24-day challenge. And I want to get into the drivers behind that and the, the process and the steps. But before that, as always, let's go back to principles, right? Okay. First principles. Why, is it, why should we care? Why is it important? Why is it necessary to be more than a passive consumer of content? You know, And I ask that seriously, because there are people who listen to content for entertainment, for mm -hmm. information, for learning, maybe a mix of all three. I mean, I have stuff in my feed that has nothing to do with fitness. It's, you know, science fiction or news or just entertainment stories or true crime. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to be a, a, an active consumer? Great question. I'm going to play both sides of the fence. Number one, it's not. If your goal is not expansion. If your goal isn't to get better, then it's not important at all. Like listen to like, there's sometimes say, for example, when I'm, when I go in the sauna, I don't like, like after every one of my workouts, I don't like taking notes on the stuff that I'm listening. So too. So that's when I'll listen to like a modern wisdom podcast, right? Because I'm, I can, well, there's a lot of good takeaways there. I'm not going to apply anything specifically to the MMU unless something really jumps out at me in that case. Like one thing that I've learned over the years is that the good shit sticks. So I'll remember it anyways, or I'll just quickly take a timestamp. But I, I consume that more so for relaxing purposes. Whereas if I'm listening to your show, you're specifically, because I don't listen to every single episode, I go through the ones and it, it seems like more often than not now, they're very applicable to specific goals. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with how much more intentionality you've given me with regards to my, my physique mm -hmm. transformation and, and nutrition. But so to put things into context, it's not important unless you are consuming content for the sake of getting better in a specific way, then it's important to make sure that we're going from passive to active. 
I like that you mentioned you pick the topics out that are relevant to you and also notice that they are specific. I occasionally will come across a new podcast that looks interesting. And then I start going through the episodes and I'm like, what is the purpose of the episode? Mm -hmm. Like they'll, they'll even have a, a big name guest on this Olympic medalist who experienced all the success. And, and this podcast is all about success. I'm like, what are they getting at? And the questions yeah. are just kind of rambling. And, and so you're right. That, that is an aspect of being efficient with our time and being intentional is, is the content itself, not even what you do with it. It has to be worthwhile content. Right. And yeah. so the thing, the analogy that just came up there is like you and I, I know you phrase it in terms of going from exercise to training. And I like to think of it in terms of going from working out to training. Mm -hmm. And this just, to me, I look at podcasting or sorry, consuming content no differently. Like when I go into the gym, the next time I go in the gym, I just have to look at my journal to see what I did last time. If for whatever reason I forget, which I won't, but just to confirm, okay, what is today? Okay. Today's legs. Okay. So what am I doing for legs? Okay. Well, today is leg day one. Cause I have it in a two day option now. So I know I'm doing squats, deads and ham curls. Like those are the three exercises I'm doing. I'm, I'm not guessing I'm going in specifically to do those things to accomplish a specific target. So when I'm consuming content, <laughs> relative to old Carl, who would just, I'd be the guy who essentially mentally went to the gym and just got on as many machines as I possibly could mm -hmm. and pounded out as many reps as I possibly could without really thinking about, okay, is this actually taking me where I want to go? Like that, it doesn't make any sense for me anyways. And the reason why it didn't make any sense, because I noticed finally when I had a hardcore wake up call that all the time I was putting into the gym, wasn't doing anything. And then when I found, when I looked at that, I was like, all this time and literally tens of thousands of dollars I'm investing in coaching and programs and communities. Like my life hasn't changed. And yet had you asked me throughout, I've been, Oh yeah, man, I got this great idea. This is so good. I'm going to do it. And it's like, no, no, yeah. what you're doing isn't working. Like when are you going to stop and wake the fuck up? Like, Anyways. Oh, that, oh that, you know, that's like so many workshops and seminars and guru like speeches you go to and you're all fired yeah. up. Yeah. You might even get some material and then it just goes on the shelf and you're done. And yep. two days later, it's back to normal. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're talking about intentionality. I want to, I want to address again how, okay, let, let me give you my personal experience. I I've got a lot of podcasts in my feed and I try to whittle them out, you know, when they aren't relevant mm -hmm. anymore, but I do notice that some shows will build up and others immediately when the episode comes out, I want to watch, I want to listen to it. Right. Okay. And that's, that's a form of intentionality in my opinion, right. Where I know yeah. that there are things that are serving me, but it's not as rigorous as what I'm hearing from you, which I'd be curious about. How do you curate what you listen to? And when you listen to it without it becoming, you know, some people might say, well, I'm not going to have a calendar for like what podcast right. has to listen to when, how do you do that? Another awesome question, Philip. Thanks for that. That's what we're here for, man. Exactly. There's awesome exactly. questions. <laughs> <laughs> and mediocre answers. Okay. <laughs> no, um, come on, man. <laughs> so, so how do I curate it? There's a couple different ways. So specifically when I'm doing my mental muscle ups, like in the morning, that journaling experience, I have to make sure for me that I'm not just spending every single morning focused on purpose. Because purpose is the one thing that I can't stop ever thinking about. I just can't. Like the podcast, the, the training manual, everything like that, right? So because when I was younger, I hated doing legs at the gym. But I don't want to be one of those guys who's got a jacked upper body and just these ridiculous chicken legs. Like you have to train every single muscle group. You have to. So that's how I develop intentionality in terms of I'll go back in my journal and I'll just look at oh man, you haven't done, ironically enough, physical health and fitness is the one that gets skipped the most for me. And I say that because my physical health and fitness is probably the aspect that I'm least concerned with at this point in time because of your help and my intentionality. I've gotten myself to a point where I'm content but not satisfied because yep. <laughs> I... I I definitely want to achieve more yet at the same time, if I have to allocate my time, which is limited to other areas of the prep work, say for example, relationships or my mental and emotional health and fitness, those are going to take a priority. So okay. really it boils down to what <clears throat> haven't I been training or 
where does it hurt the most? Okay, I, I like that because you, in your training manual, which I'm showing on the video here for YouTube, this is the Brotherhood Bootcamp training manual. You've got the prep work, as you call it, the P-R-E-P, -E right? Yeah. Purpose, relationships, emotional, and physical. Yeah. And you're saying that you, you can choose on any given day which one you're going to focus on, and sometimes you just don't focus on something for a while. Yeah. And maybe you need, maybe you need or want to. You yep. also mentioned though, sometimes you do that intentionally because it doesn't need that right now. There's all these things to balance. You only have so much time in the day. You kind of go between them and maybe one can uplift the other when you know when mm -hmm. you focus on it, right? So people listening, like Carl's really good with the analogy of taking the gym and applying it to life. Like he said, the chicken legs versus the strong upper body, <laughs> <laughs> which is like the opposite for women, right? It's big legs. And yeah, yeah, that's body. right. That's right. <laughs> So all of this aspect of intentionality is really important. And you're wondering why, why the hell do I have Carl in here to talk about this on a fitness show besides, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the best dudes in my life and, and you, you're going to learn a lot from him is when you're listening to this show, I put out two episodes a week and two short episodes a week. And if you're listening to every single one of those, that's a lot of time commitment. And I thank you for that, but I want you to take action with that. Right. And so I want to understand, Carl, you're, now let's drill down a little bit more with your focus on integrating lessons from podcasts in your life. What okay. are the steps that somebody can take without being overwhelmed right now? Okay. So really, really quickly, inside the gym again, I really like to, as I'm teaching classes or working with clients, I really like to use the scale of level one, two, three. And so level one is take it nice and easy. Level two is dial up when you can, dial back when you need. And level three is give it everything you got. So as it relates to, sorry, r remind me of the question so I can make sure I dial this in right. The question is when you are listening to podcasts, how do you take the next step from okay. that to action? Okay. Excellent. So when I first started, like the, the training manual that you're holding in your hands, that is the level three, as far as I'm concerned, like those five questions okay. are level three. So it might be a little bit intense for everybody because, or not everybody, for some people, because it requires a lot of introspection. And if you're not used to introspection, it's going to be a bit much. It's like putting too much weight on the bar. So the first level is just kind of contemplation. So you hear something and man, like just kind of sit there with it for a minute. Like you don't have to do anything. Just let it sink in because eventually what I've found, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this is it's going to come back in some way, shape, or form, and there will be something that happens in your life where you can apply what you were contemplating on. Um, but I don't really want to leave it to chance like that. So level two... Hold on. Let's address that, though. The contemplation. When you, says it, when you say it comes back, do you mean because you're continuing to consume content that the theme reemerges because it's relevant to you or ah, something question. else? Yeah. No, something else. I'm glad you asked for clarification okay. on that. So for example, hmm, I can't think of a specific, <clears throat> no, I can think of a specific example. So day one of our challenge, like the 24 before 2024 challenge was all about values, right? So this morning when I'm going for a walk, I actually, it was something that happened later in the day. I was on Instagram and I saw Chris Williamson from the Modern Wisdom podcast post a post that he got 1.5 million subscribers. Okay. So instantly that triggered a little bit of an, like just insecurity in me. I'm like, man, this guy's mm -hmm. so far ahead of me. Right. So, but now since values is top of mind for me, I immediately asked myself the question, question, Carl, what do you truly value? Like, what do you really value? Do you value the number of subscribers or downloads you have? And it's like, no. What I truly value is the connection I have with the people that I love the most. And the video you sent me today, and then Alan sent, and then Dennis texts me as well. Like, that's what I value. So am I going to feel horrible about something that means nothing to me, in this case, subscribers, or am I going to feel amazing about what means the most to me? And that's connection with the guys in my life. So that's what I mean by if, if you're just contemplating something, now you're kind of putting it into, into your RAS so that you can start keeping an eye open for it a okay. little bit more. So that's, Love it. that's Love level it. one. And then level two, which is what we're doing in the challenge right now for part of it, is just answering a question that's relevant to what you're consuming. So for example, if I hear from your podcast, like the one with Mike Milner, what was that? 126? Oh, geez. <laughs> no, 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 that <laughs> one, was, no, it, no, it was 123. 123. It was, one, yeah, it was 123. Yeah. 123. So there were a lot of gems in there. But the one that I that hit me the hardest that I did an MMU on 
was this idea of depositing trust money into your bank account, like self-trust, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm asking myself the question, how can I continuously make deposits into my self-trust bank account? And then I'm literally writing it down and finding an action step that represents me putting those words that inspired me into action. So that's level two. So that's inspiration. Yes. Okay. Level three, the difference between level three or level two and level three is the difference between exercise and training. So it it's all good to hear really, really good stuff and implement it right away. But that's like going to the gym without a plan. It's better than sitting on the couch, but it still might not get you anywhere. And even if it does, you're going to hit a plateau and you'll probably stay there. So what really helped me go from level two to level three, in other words, exercise to training, was making sure that those steps I was taking were linked to a very specific outcome that I was wanting. So for example, with you, the goal is to gain muscle, right? Like I want to add some muscle. So if I'm listening to your podcast and I'm like, oh man, that's a really good idea. I should start tracking my calories. Okay. Yeah, that's good and everything like that. And this is a really good example because you know better than anybody, I, I hated tracking calories and now I love it. The reason why I hated it before is because it wasn't linked up to a specific target. Mm -hmm. I knew I should do it. I knew there was benefits to it, but it wasn't linked up to something specific that I was measuring. And this is where I used to go wrong big time. I would have goals like I want to get bigger. I want to get stronger. I want to be in better shape. Those aren't goals. Like those are just words. Like what is, what does that even mean? Like, what does that look like? So what do I want to look, feel and perform? Like if I can define those to the point where I can measure them now I'm going from exercising to training. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So you, you can either contemplate that's level one, right? And, yep. and one of the things you talk about in your manual and on your show all the time is no level zeros. So at least doing yeah. something here is be way better than nothing. It's kind of yeah. like going from, from zero to 80%. Then you go from 80 to 90 and then 90 to a hundred level two, answering the relevant question, getting inspired, putting it, um, what you've heard into an answer, a question to yourself that you then answer. And then level three, linking that to specific outcomes that you are measuring. Right. And in your challenge, you're doing it kind of an escalating approach to get there for the brothers in that because people might feel overwhelmed doing it all on day one. Just like if yep. I told you, you need to train, you need to sleep, you need to eat, do this, 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 all on day one. <laughs> Forget that. I'm going to go back yeah. and do keto again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, keto. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's the boogeyman for me. <laughs> no, no, I get it. The boogeyman. I like that. I like that. The keto boogeyman. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the, the trigger. So, all right. So you gave a little example there from the episode 123 with Mike Milner. I don't know if you want to dive into more of that or another example that's specific to this show. So people listening can be like, oh, okay, that's how I can do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do another, we'll do another one. And actually <clears throat> I'm not going to do, so I sent you the three this morning, but I'm going to, I'm going to skip the one or I'm going to call an audible on the one from your episode 100. Do you happen to have that handy what the quote was that I got from you there? I don't remember it off hand. If you don't, I can Wait pull it Wait a minute, you sent me that quick. this morning? What's, okay, I got a bunch Okay, of which text. means I can pull it up right away. Give me two seconds. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Is it the one with all the photos? Um, yes, it is. So, okay, yeah, so I got it right okay. here. Okay. okay, so this is what Philip said in episode 100. He said, quote, skepticism is not just questioning everything that comes at you, it's questioning everything that comes from you, end quote. And I remember specifically when I was in the gym listening to that, I had to stop what I was doing. They're like, oh, that was gut wrenching. Like it was a gut wrenching aha moment. So I'll I'll just you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna call an audible on this one and pull it through the MMU. So the situation that so the first question in the in the MMU is what is your situation? And essentially think of that like you're determining what you're gonna be training inside the gym. Like what is what is the outcome that you're kind of going towards? So you, you define what the situation is. So if you're going to the gym, oh, I want to increase my bench by 20 pounds. Okay, well, that's the situation. In this case, I'm realizing that I have some stories and some beliefs when it comes to my physique that probably aren't serving me. So what are those beliefs and how do I change them to ones that are serving me? So that's what I would put as the situation. 
So let's let's break that down real quick. So you took a quote that I said, and by the way, this is really cool that you could talk to the person who said the quote, right? Because <laughs> yeah, sometimes the things I will say on a podcast, and I'm sure you've seen this the same, they just come out. It's not like yep. some profound thing, yep. and and it hits somebody else. And I'm not gonna I'm not going to diminish that at all. I'm not gonna say, oh, you know, that's I didn't mean anything by it when right. you took something from that. That's that's awesome. So. Yep. The skeptic, skepticism not at you, but from you. You heard that. That's your notable quotable, the, the phrase you use. Yeah. And you turn that into an interpretation for you of limiting beliefs. Yes. Right? Which is extremely a profound concept in, in everything we do to yeah. improve. And then you said, okay, that, that's the beginning of my inspiration, right? Yeah. Right. So that's like that's where you then link <clears throat> it back to the situation. And side note here, when I do you can look at it a couple different ways. It's like if you go to the gym and it's leg day and you normally like say for me, it'd be squats, deads, and then leg curl, right? Well, let's say all the squat racks are taken and for whatever reason, there's no Olympic bars. Well, I don't want to do leg curls first for sure because like that's definitely going to limit my squats and my deads. But at the same time, I don't want to wait half an hour to start my workout. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go there. So there's flexibility in the way that you do the exercises. Uh, same thing with this. In the mornings, I always start off with the situation because I want to. I'm lucky that I have access to hundreds of quotes that I've gotten in hmm. my podcast that I have readily available on my phone. So I know who the author is and it's like, okay, so today if I'm working on physical health and fitness, I'll just go to all the Philip Pape quotes that I have and I'm going to pick one that is relevant to whatever I've defined the situation to be. And so then, but if you get your notable quotable first, chances are it hit you for a reason. And that reason is something that you can probably put in the form of a question that is a challenge that you are facing. So applying the notable quotable and then defining your situation in the form of a question that represents a challenge you're facing makes it so much easier that you're going to, or much more likely that whatever you took from the podcast is going to serve you well. Uh, okay. Okay. I like that. So you take a quote that you hear, turn it into a question. I would expand on that. And I know you have as well, that it doesn't have to be a verbatim quote. If you hear no. a general idea, a concept, something, your paraphrase, maybe it was half an hour ago in the podcast and you've, it's been sticking with you and now you just want to get it out. You don't yep. necessarily have to find the time step. We want to make this easy for, for people to get what you want out of it. And, and, and there you go. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's perfect. Because yeah. then in, in this situation, if I didn't have the timestamp, I'd have been like, oh, what did Philip say? It would have been something along the, along the lines of don't believe everything you think. Okay. And then I just write down, don't believe everything you think. And that would be mm -hmm. my quote unquote notable quotable. Mm -hmm. So then the next question inside the MMU is what is your transformation? And this one really, really helped me. I, where did I hear it first? I think, I can't remember. I think I read it somewhere actually where you hear about this couple and they're looking to go on vacation. So they go to the airport and they're talking to a travel agent and they're like, Oh, well, where do you want to go? They're like, we're not quite sure. It's like, well, well, what was the last vacation you went on? Oh, we went, we went to this place. We went to that place. Well, what did you like about it? Uh, well, you know what? I'm not really sure. But then, so he, he's had enough of this, like just going around and around. So he says, what didn't you like about the vacation? Oh man, the food wasn't really that good. Oh, the hotel wasn't all that clean. And people can just rattle off what they didn't like about it. Right. So he's it's like, true. okay. So now he makes a list. He has a list of all the things that they don't want. So it's like, okay. So then a vacation that you would be looking for would be one that has great food. One that has a uh, pool, one that has whatever it is they listed. Right. So he just lists off like five things. So I found that for me, what really helps to get me clear about what I do want is to first list out what I don't want, which is why the, what is your transformation? You list four things that you don't want versus four things that you do want. So in this case, this case, if I'm looking to be a skeptic for myself and keep in mind, I'm just doing this impromptu. If I'm looking to be a skeptic of my own beliefs, what I want to make sure is that I'm not letting my limiting beliefs guide my behavior. So what I would want on the opposite of that is I want empowering beliefs to guide my behavior. Mm. And then I would keep going down the list, just seeing the opposite of what I don't want to get very clear about what I do want, because now it's going to be dialed into what I want at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. That, it makes a lot of sense the way you explained it, where because of psychology, we love to criticize. We love to say what we don't like, you know, if everything goes well, <laughs> we tend to be 
it, it's it's like going to Amazon and looking at a product. You're going to see the one star reviews and the five star reviews. The five star reviews are probably all bought, bought for, <laughs> and the <laughs> one star reviews right. are the, all the honest reviews, and nobody reviews them in between, right? So, and that just for listeners, right? Again, in your training manual, it, that is the next section. What is your transformation? And, and it is just four lines that say don't versus do. And what Carl just said is. If, if you can't think of what you want to do, think of what you don't like and then turn it into the opposite of, of what can serve you. Awesome. Yeah. And as okay. it, so as it relates to our physical body, right? Like for me, if I say, you know what? I don't want my arms to be small. I don't want to have a flat chest. I don't want to not be able to see my six pack. Okay, well, what do I want? I want jacked arms. I want a full chest. I want a ripped six pack. Like it's just, it comes so much quicker if you're stumbling upon the things that you do want, if you first list things that you don't want. So anyways, not to be that. Cool. Yeah. No. And I'm, and, and Carl probably notices me looking down a lot, but again, I'm just admiring his, uh, his uh, training manual as we go through bad, this. Eh? Like the, no, it's great. Like it's great. It's, feels? I like the way the cover yeah, feels. No, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, but it's structured, you know, it's like, yeah. you've got it all listed in here and the whole first like 30 pages explain this whole process. Um, and give you a bunch of examples. So, all right. So that's the transformation. You've got your situation, your notable quotable, your transformation. And then what's next? The next one is what is your inspiration? And what I found with this one, and this actually ties back to what you said, because what you said is that sometimes you say things on your podcast that become aha moments for somebody else that weren't necessarily what you meant. So what I found for me is that the, the fourth question, what is your inspiration, allows you to make this really personal and customized to you. So it's where you're essentially, what I do is right before I'm about to write out what is my inspiration, I go back and I just really quickly review, okay, what was the situation? What's the notable quotable and what's the things that I don't and do want? And then I'm trying really to come up with an answer for what is the situation. And I'm just kind of word vomiting on the page to let my own inner wisdom come through. Like, what does this mean to me? It might be a place where I let out some more frustrations about the way that in this case, the way that my limiting beliefs have been holding me back, why I need to let them go, how it's not serving me. So this is kind of a free for all, mm -hmm. but it's where you, you kind of bring everything together and put it into context before the final. And what I would say is the most important step. So that makes sense. So you've taken this, these pieces, you're now putting them together in free form. It, it kind of reminds me of the cl a classic like journal. I know, I know we don't necessarily want to use the word, but that's no, what no, it that's looks fine. like to me is, is kind of putting it together, which is nice because then you get, you get the brain dump away from the, all the initial information you wrote down. You're, you're synthesizing it, right? Yeah. It's kind of like when you have all your notes Great and you word. need to write a paper or do a podcast. Now you're synthesizing it together. And then what comes after that? So before what comes after that, though, I just, yeah. to give an example, sure. I, I want to demo yeah. what oh, I please. wrote down for please. this one specifically in today's mm -hmm. MMU. So what is your inspiration? <clears throat> I put, what if I'm completely wrong? I love and hate this question because at first glance, who wants to be wrong? Yet isn't being wrong typically the first step to being right? So what do I want to be right about as it relates to my body? And what does right look and feel like both tangibly and intangibly? So now I'm just, I'm really just asking myself more questions to help me get clear on the next step, which is what is your integration? And this one, oh man, if I were to show you the, the different pieces and versions of the, of the training manual, that's, this is, this is the one that's given me the most headaches because like I've been doing this since 2017 and for such a long time, I was doing the, I was doing, it used to be called implementation. I was doing the implementation, 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 but nothing was really changing. And there would be times where I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I wouldn't realize it until the next morning. And I opened up the training mount. I was like, oh man, yeah, that's right. I was supposed to do this. And I just, I just forgot. So there's five extremely critical steps there because the question, what is your integration? The whole, the whole idea behind that is to get you to take one small, specific, and simple action in the next 24 hours, whatever that is. So the first three of those five little check, like literally check boxes in the training manual that you want to check off to make sure you're doing the right thing. There you go. Thank you, Philip. That's awesome. So are small, specific, and simple. But then I added two that made a huge difference. Number one was scheduled. So I had to like literally set an alarm in my phone to remind me when I was going to take the action that I come up with. 
and then shared. So shared, I mm. might change in the next version of the manual to either say spot so that I can ask somebody for a spot with that or shout out. Because if you were the one who inspired me with your notable quotable, I want to give you a shout out for helping me take this action. So that's the, that's the community slash accountability slash yeah. brotherhood aspect of that. Yeah. You, you know what? Yeah. Even account, I'm not a huge fan of that. That word accountability, to be honest. Okay. Support community, sis, you know, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I like the scheduled, right? Cause I think, I don't know if any of this was inspired by the smart acronym, which specific measurable action or whatever it is. <laughs> There's a million yeah, versions of measurable <laughs> actionable realistic time bound time T. bound yeah time bound even realistic like i know what, it's not, not the most goal? useful thing break. <laughs> that's why yeah anyways the schedule part is important though because sometimes yeah. that comes up a lot with i know with my clients where it's just add a reminder to your phone like that, if you do nothing else just put this reminder in your phone and like you said it might be a reminder to remind yourself for something like it may not even be <laughs> the yeah. thing itself <laughs> because you don't know when you're going to do that thing necessarily. Right. right. Yeah. My name is Tony. I'm a strength lifter in my forties. Thank you to Phil and his wits and weights community for helping me learn more about nutrition and how to implement better ideas into my strength training. Phil has a, a very, very good understanding of macros and chemical compounds and hormones and all that, and he's continuously learning. Uh, that's what I like about Phil. He's got a great sense of humor. We'll go back and forth. He's very relaxed, very easy to talk to. Uh, one of the greatest things about Phil, in my view, is that he practices what he preaches. He also works out with barbells. He trains heavy, not as heavy as me, but he trains heavy, he lifts, so he knows programs, he knows uh, different variations. So if you talk with him about uh, getting in better shape, even better, um, he's probably going to give you some good advice, and I would strongly recommend you uh, talk with him and uh, help you out. Thanks. Another piece of that, though, that I got from <clears throat> James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, and that's why the first part of the integration is your I am statement. Mm. So I found for me that linking behaviors to the type of person I know myself or that I want to be, and he talks about this in Atomic Habits, is extremely powerful for getting us to follow through on the things that we have difficulty following through on. Hmm. So linking it up to an identity statement. So in this case, yeah. my identity my identity statement for physical health and fitness, because I have one or two for each area of the prep work that are just standards that when I say them and I thank them, they generate a, a very, very empowering feeling in me. And uh, one of my I am statements for physical health and fitness, fitness is I am one jacked motherfucker. <laughs> and as soon as, I, as soon as I read that, it's like, yeah, whatever this action is, it's getting done. No, that, that's like a vision board, man. You know, it's like right. having Arnold and like Ronnie and all these guys on the vision board. Like, or that's fill what up, up, fill up paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. So, yeah. Yeah, but self identity. Yeah, it's huge. yeah, the integration yeah. is easily the the most important part in terms of making sure that listen, you're listening to brilliant guys like Philip. Let's uh, let's put their words to some actual action. And the the reason why I switched it from implementation to integration is because I wanted to get myself to start thinking about rather than just like one hit wonder steps because mm. that's mm. what I was doing all the time. I like to think about little like the atomic habits thing where little tiny habits that I can start developing into practices. Right. That so you continue to do that are part right. of your new routine. Yeah. Right. So say for Expanded example, comfort zone. Yeah. 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 Like the other day sure. when uh, Derek had that whole thing on gratitude. Right. So <laughs> one of the things that I, this was just a conversation with a friend of mine that when I had him on my podcast and he mentioned how gratitude for him is the first step to self-awareness. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to start practicing gratitude a little bit more about how am I going to do it? So now, since I'm going for walks every day, thanks to Philip, I have two different types of walks. I have a walk with the block, which is the block is my inner enemy. Let's call him that. So I give him some air time and, and let him come out and tell me why he's doing what he's doing and what he needs from me. And then I do the same thing with gratitude. So I'll go for a gratitude walk where it's like, hey, what is the one thing I'm really going to be grateful for during this walk and just giving that some emotionality? So what, what are the practices that I can 
potentially make into an integration. That way it is actually integrated into my life and therefore has a much more likely chance of sticking. Okay. So then I have a follow-up on that and it's actually two parts. One is how do you avoid getting overwhelmed because you're doing this every day and now you're coming up with a new action every day where those would stack up if they were all new habits every single day, five days, seven days a week, you're starting something new and you could, you could just imagine these layering on top of each other is this overwhelming set of things you're doing. If they're not one hit wonders, that's, that's one. And then the other piece is how do you close the loop? You know, you've written it down. How do you hold yourself? I guess I will use the word accountable, but it's self accountability to that. Okay. Are you going to remember both those questions? Cause I won't. Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's like, oh, that's no, like uh, what media does, right? To the politicians <laughs> up on the dais. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ask that's them right. three questions in once. Yeah. Okay. So the first <laughs> question is how do you prevent overwhelm? Yeah. How do you prevent overwhelm? Okay. So yeah. let's say in the gym right now, like there, there are so many different principles that I could be using during my workouts, right? Like I could be supersetting, I could be doing five by fives, I could be doing German volume training, I could be doing uh, long range partials, which I am right now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one. And then I really have to decide, okay, how long am I going to test this for? Because I don't know if it's going to work, but I want to test it. If I'm coming upon new stuff all the time, I then have to compare it to say, okay, number one, have I given my previous thing enough time to actually see if this works? If these answers no, then I just discard it. And if the answer is yes, it's like, okay, we're going to move on to this something new. Or do I really, really like long range partials? I'm getting great results. So there's no need to change it. So how long have I been doing it? Have I given enough time to test? And then another really, really simple way thing that helped me Oh man, you should have seen my notes before whenever I was doing, let, let's say I'm listening to your podcast and it's just notable quotable after notable quotable after notable quotable. I'm like, you know what? As I'm listening to this podcast, I'm limiting myself to four. That is it. So then once those four are done, every other piece of content that you say that really triggers something in, in me and inspires me, I now have to compare it against one of the other four to see which one I'm going to ditch. Because I've maxed myself, I've made my overwhelm limit four, mm -hmm. which means if anything else comes after the four, it's either replacing one of the four or it's not making it to the list. Just like exercises. Like how many exercises do I have time for in the gym today? Well, I'm going to be there for 45 minutes. I know given how I'm doing it, three exercises is good for me. But what if I want to do five? Too bad. You've got time for three. Yeah. Let's get more specific though. If, if you're doing your prep work every day in the journal yeah, and you're writing down a an integration uh, action because you have the, the statement here, I am committed to doing something by some time. Yeah. Right. And, and generally I'm guessing like it's with, you said it's within 24 hours. Yeah. Is that action something you can do once or is this sometimes an action that then becomes a repeated action? It's both. And, okay. And the ones that become repeated actions couldn't be, get overwhelmed every day by adding a new one or do you sometimes repeat <laughs> the one you did yesterday. And if I'm overthinking this, let me know. You are not overthinking this. This is a brilliant question. And it takes us into IBI principle number one, right? Quality versus quantity. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times when I'm doing, it's like, it. so when I'm doing the MMU now, I've done it so many times. It's like, if you're doing a squat, for example, I found one of the things that really helps me add weight to my squat is if I focus on at the bottom of the squat, forcing my knees out, like really thinking about forcing my knees out in order to get up faster. Like that's just a, that's just a cue that works for me. doesn't have to work for everybody. But what I found with the MMUs is at some point in time, those cues, you're not going to have to think about them. They're going to become unconscious because you've done them so many times. So now when I'm going into that fifth question, what is your integration? I'm automatically thinking of quality over quantity. So I'm probably going to ask myself a question that will represent me doing something that I'm already doing with a higher level of quality. Mm, okay. So that way you're not really piling on more and more things to do. You're going for depth instead of width. I like it. Okay. Yeah. That, that's actually a really good answer. And you know, I might, I might throw that in our uh, group later as ah, like inspiration, okay. right? As a notable quotable <laughs> oh, okay. from today. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. That's my action. <laughs> and then the second question, what was it again? The self accountability. So now you have that the next day comes oh, along, 
what if you didn't do it? Like, there's a chance you didn't do it. So yeah, that, that, is, that happens. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. So there, there's a couple things that happen there. Number one is I scheduled it. So in my phone, I have a standard alarm that just says MMU. And then I change it to whatever time I've designated during my morning routine that that is going to be the time that I do my MMU. But sometimes stuff comes up and I can't get to it. So there's a couple different options that I do. Number three, if you think about it. Uh, number one, well, if I didn't do it, maybe it wasn't important enough to be done. Hmm. So then I'm, I'm really going to evaluate if I needed to do it. Uh, maybe I just got lazy. Maybe, maybe I got busy. So now it's like, okay, well, do I need to put this on top of the thing that I are, that I'm planning on doing today? So again, now it's like going back to that thing of where I have four notes, but now it's really two. Mm -hmm. So, but what I usually do is most of the things that I come up with in terms of integration steps don't take very long at all. And they're things that okay. I can do in really a few minutes. So what I do is every morning I go to my previous pages and I don't have this in your current training manual, but at the top where it says PREP, I'm rating myself out of three in every area of the prep work to give myself a daily score. Okay. So then I do that before I start a new MMU. So then if I'm going back and I was like, ah, I didn't do that thing for physical health. Now it's like, mm, did it need to be done? No. Okay. We'll move on. Yes, it needed to be done. So say, for example, your latest, not your latest episode, but episode 126, where you talked about the importance of carbs and making sure that I'm not going to, like, I'm not ripping down my muscle and using it as fuel, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's an important one for me. So if I didn't do yesterday's MMU and today's MMU was based on that from your podcast, guess what? Yesterday's, it's gone. I'm forgetting about it because focusing on my carbs, which is essentially what I did this morning, really long story short with that MMU, I realized I'm not like in macro factor, I'm hitting my calories, I'm hitting my protein, I'm hitting my fat, but I'm not hitting carbs. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that it's really affecting my energy throughout the day. So what I came up with long story short for the integration is going into macro factor today in advance, making sure that my day hits my, my uh, carb targets. And then at the end of the day, and I set alarm for this, is I'm going to give myself a rating for my energy as it relates to my carbs. So I'm going to nice. write down, what was your energy out of three? Oh, it was level three in the evening. Okay, well, what was your carb count? Well, your carb was 367, and that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, awesome. So now over a couple of weeks time, I'm going to be able to see, does the, does the amount of carbs that I have actually affect my energy in the evening? Because that's what I want to know. So I'm going to do that for a couple of weeks. Everyone listening should do that. <laughs> no, I'm okay, just saying. Well, well, it's it's a really good. You see, this uh, integration yeah, step. Technique. How much yeah. time? How much time does it take yeah. me to write down my energy level and compare it to my carbs? Like that's thirty right. seconds. So a lot of the okay. steps, sure, there could be a lot of them, but they all take like 15, 30 seconds, and yeah. some of them no, are and automatic. That's, and that's that's actually part of the answer right there is just keep them short and simple because yeah. you are going to get overwhelmed if it's like make a list of a hundred blah 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 and then yeah. do this and do this and do that. Uh, it's funny because I. I, I'm a little bit, well, I'm organized in a different way, but like I will keep emails on read in my inbox. I have a very small inbox. I, I'm a zero inbox type of person. I like to just take care of things or file them away if it's just information or leave mm -hmm. them on read if I'm going to get them done. But the, right. the, the lower they get on the list that I realize they must not be that important. And eventually it's like, they go. Delete. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So I'm it's the same, the same kind of thing. You just never know. Because in the moment you're all excited. You're like, yeah, yeah I got to do this thing. And then you really, you know, time is uh, an interesting moderator. Um, I do that with a lot of your text messages, actually. I'll read them and I'm like, this isn't important. I'll make it unread. And then I just completely delete you all together. Um, so <laughs> well, that explains it. <laughs> explains a few things. No. All right. So if, if I haven't lost the audience with getting too much technical about this, hopefully not. I think it's pre a pretty cool approach, no matter what. Like whether you have Carl's journal, the principles are you know, time tested and, and you've referenced things that you've borrowed from, right? Like atomic habits and behavioral psychology and all this stuff. You know, Carl's the man to reach out to if you have questions about this. I want to get into some follow-ups on this outside of the specific application. For example, doing this process, is there something that has really surprised you, you know, over the mm. years after listening and then going through this process? Great question. And it already makes me think that I can't believe I haven't thought of an answer in advance to what your last question is going to be. But yeah, 
the th- the thing that surprised me, and this may sound like it's not going to sound like a broken record to your audience, but it sounds like a broken record to me. One of the reasons I first started doing this journaling process, if you will, was because when I hit rock bottom back at the end of 2020, beginning 2021, I really wanted to evaluate and figure out what the lead domino in my life was as it related to the prep work. So is it my physical health and fitness? Is it my emotional health and fitness? My sense of purpose? Like, what is it that if I take care of it, it's going to take care of everything else? And it made sense to me that it was my emotional health and fitness because I'm like, man, if I can, if I can become the master of rather than the slave of my emotions, and despite how I feel, I can take the actions that I know I need to take. That to me is like the lead domino. So I followed that for a long time and nothing changed. In fact, it got worse because I was putting so much pressure on myself. Hmm. So then I just asked myself that, again, at that point in time, I was being skeptical of my own beliefs. So I was saying, okay, Carl, what is the thing? I kind of pulled a George Costanza in that I did the opposite. So if you don't know who George Costanza is and what the opposite is, then just stop listening if you're not into Seinfeld because I don't want to talk to you. Anyways, so relationships was the bottom of the prep work for me, like the bottom. Hence why Jenny Lee and I had our three month separation and just, yeah. I Had you asked me if our relationships were important to me? I've been like, yeah, they are. But if you look at my actions, they're not because I'm canceling on friends. I'm not returning messages. I'm not returning calls. I'm not spending time with Jenny Lee. So I said, okay, well, what would happen if I did the opposite? What if I made relationships like the lead domino? And wouldn't you know, that changed everything, absolutely everything. So what surprised me and this has become a fundamental belief of mine, is that if I wanted to improve any area of my life, whether it was my body, my sense of purpose, and especially my mental and emotional health, it all depended on the quality of the relationships I have with the people I cared the most about. I was not expecting that. And that has carried forward into your mission today. I mean, it, it, it yeah. shines in everything you do. It's connecting, connecting people to each other and connecting yeah. with them. So if someone listening feels like they are struggling and they're like, well, I like your idea, but I'm overwhelmed and I'm not sure where to start. And maybe it's mental health. Maybe it's something else. Like you said, emotion sounded like the obvious root cause because it was tied into mental health, but something yeah. else was holding it back. Even if you had quote unquote leveled up your emotion as best you could, how can someone figure that out? Well, to me, it's like, I didn't figure out with the squat that my knee, that if I focus on my doing my knees, out until I'm going to say this was within the last 18 months. And I've been a personal trainer for 12 years. So it's going to be a matter of taking and testing, taking and testing, taking and testing. So consuming something that works or that you think is going to work and testing it out. The hard part is you got to figure out, okay, how long do I need to give this before? It's like a diet, right? So if people are going to try, say for example, shred Tober, okay, well, if people are going to do that, you got to stick with it for the two weeks to see if it actually works. You can't, you can't do shred Tober for a week and you can't do it for six weeks. You got to do it for the specified amount of time. So you got to figure out, okay, well, if I think this is really going to help me, what's a realistic amount of time that I need to give this to see if it actually works. And more importantly, this is one of the questions it's called the miracle questions from the book switch, which is a phenomenal book on habits. Miracle question that uh, therapists would use with their clients. Say, for example, if they're an addict and or an al- alcoholic, say, okay, you w- you wake up tomorrow and your problem is a hundred percent gone, and you're like, you're you're just a new person. What would be the first sign that you know it's gone? Mm-hmm. So, when it comes to our goals and changing them from goals to targets, if we can get clear about what the first sign is that what we're doing is working then we'll be able to really tell if we know what we're doing is working. So for mm-hmm. example, like I've got a client who I had a conversation with him the other day about macro factor. He went in and he changed his goals to weight loss because the scale wasn't going down. And we had a very interesting conversation. So he changed it back. But I said, dude, like, what are you measuring? Like what specifically are you measuring? He's like, well, I'm measuring my waist circumference and I'm measuring how my clothes fit. Like I, I, I want to lose weight because, and then I ask him why, because I want my clothes to fit better. I want to feel stronger. I'm like, do your clothes fit better right now? Yeah. They're looser. Do you feel stronger right now? And do we have the numbers and the evidence to support that? Yes. So then why are you changing your fucking targets? Because he lost sight of what his targets actually were. Wow. That that's okay. I'm, I'm processing this because I'm trying to think of 
what the you know people who are listening, you just gave them a few different ways to approach this. One one way sounds like first of all, the prep work has has different areas, right? And if you can identify the different areas of your life, at least spending time on all of them to some extent would help versus neglecting one completely, yep. right? That that comes to mind. And then the second thing is testing, measuring, and then going by the things that are improving that would have improved if you knew the problem was gone. Yep. So I had, a, I had a client recently who, a long-term client, and it's it's similar situation you said, like she knew what to do and wasn't doing it and it was showing in the results, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as she, for example, started eating more, whatever it was, and the next day, hey, feeling great. I was scared about regaining weight, for example, but I'm not anymore because I realized that what's more important is this other thing and I was you know, way worse off with that. I'm, I'm not going into mm -hmm. details here, but it's good, Carl. Okay. So <laughs> hold on. There's, there's yeah. one thing Go I'm going to add there. That's sure. really, really important. Yeah. We don't give ourselves enough credit when it comes to looking at our past experience. Hmm. For me, in terms of training, for example, I knew what I liked to do for training before I was as consistent as I am now. And I deviated from that. So when I had my wake up call, I'm like, Carl, just what do you, what do you like to do for training that, you know, gets you results? And so that's why I'm doing the style that I do now. If we can get quiet and reflect on a once upon a time when we were experiencing the opposite of that, which we don't want to be experiencing right now and put the pieces of the puzzle together of what was different then as compared to now, hence the second or the third question, don't want versus do want, it, get, it becomes pretty clear that you already know the answers. So that's interesting. That brings up the also the idea of if you are testing and measuring and taking action and things are not going as planned, right? What, what, how you learn from that experience. I mean, that, that's, that's what comes to mind to me as well, because I'm sure you've done your prep work and you did some integration and it's not, it's not giving you what you want. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just th that to me, this is where the 80, 20 rule really applies. Yep. Like I know my results are going to come from 20% of the work, but typically speaking, if I'm not getting results from the integration steps that I've been dedicating my time and energy to doing, there's really about 20% of my excuses or reasons that are going to be why. And one of them is going to be, you haven't been doing it long enough, plain mm -hmm. and simple. So say for example, my podcast, right? Like I don't have the quote unquote amount of followers and downloads that I want right now. And why is that? Oh, well, there's a million and one reasons, but the main reason that I am choosing to entertain, I just haven't been doing it. I haven't gotten in the reps yet. Mm -hmm. I need to get in more reps. I am convinced because this is what so many successful people in front of me have told me is that you just need to get in more reps. So I am committed to getting in the reps. So if, if, if ever anything's not working, it, it typically boils down to, have I really given it a chance? True. I mean, we talk about consistency and it's become a, a buzzword, yeah. but really it consistency doesn't, commitment. yeah. Commitment. Yeah. Right. Getting, doing something for a repeated basis over time, not perfectly and not necessarily every day, yep. but continuously over time. You know, yep. you can miss a podcast episode, but you do the next 10 you're you're still golden. As soon as you drop off, that's, that's where the, the challenge comes in. All right. What, one or two more things you got time? A couple, couple of minutes. Course. Yeah. Of course. Okay. You and I had a, I think it was a conversation over text not long ago about not being reactionary or conversely being reacting too quickly when you hear something on a podcast and be like, Oh, that, that, that blows my mind. It, you know, it just opened my mind. It changed my mind, whatever. You probably know what I'm talking about, right? Almost like sometimes the, what might be a notable quotable is really just a sound bite. It just sounds great in the moment. Yeah. And then you, and then, and you're like, you want to take action on it, but maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> maybe you should yeah. step back and like, just wait and sit with it. So what are your thoughts on that? It because okay. So I'm trying to think of who quoted this on my podcast. Oh, oh it, it was it actually, I, th I think the it was awareness that. thing. Yeah. Awareness or, or was it the awareness and either the way, first step is not awareness or whatever. I, no, yeah. I'll, I'll summarize it right yeah. now. But Di talked about when you know your values, it gets really, it's very easy to say yes or no to things. If you know specifically what your targets are in a specific area, say for example, your physique. Okay. Well, I know what I'm eating today in macro factor already because it's programmed in there and I've left some room because it's Friday. So I'm probably going to have a cocktail. So there's room in there for that. But 
if something comes up and I want to, Jenny Lee wants to go somewhere or something, it's like, ah, it's, it's not part of the plan right now. Like it's not macro factor. We're going to do this. So when I'm crystal clear on what my macros are, it's easy for me to say, no, I can't have that. So what if instead of macros, whatever area of the prep work you're talking about, you are so crystal clear on the behaviors that are taking you to where you want to go that you do only those behaviors. So say, for example, with my podcast, right? Like the podcast, I'm not going to say it's my life, but in, in a way it kind of is like it kind of is. So I know, actually, let me put it this way in my phone. I have an app called done. It's a free app. It's a habit tracker. And inside of there, I've established what my big lifts are for each area of the prep work. So what is my squat, my bench, and my dead for my purpose? What's my squat, my bench, and my dead for my relationships? I've got, I have one thing for each area of the prep work, but I, I know what those three lifts are for me. So those are the things I'm focused on on a daily basis. I have to hit those things. If I get other things in, sure, that's fine. But I don't need to because I am crystal clear on what is most important. And the, the less clarity you have on what's most important, the, like, the more likely you are to do that which is not important. Okay, I get that. So what about the situation where you haven't been able to crystallize that yet because there, is so, there are so many angles and potential quote unquote facts and evidence and things. And I'll give you, I'll be very concrete. Somebody, one of my followers reached out by email and said, you know, I really trust your opinion, but I'm here are 10 things that are all different and conflicting that I'm hearing from influencers and this doctor and this person, and this person about all sorts of things, whatever carbs and keto and this and that. Okay. And they all conflict. And it's like, you know, she felt that a lot of them were trustworthy sources and she's not sure which one to go with. And and, and that's just an example. Like I gave her clarity. Yep. <laughs> I gave her my strong opinion on oh, which way to go. She's like, all right, cool. I'm good. But when people are just not sure from the, from day one, they haven't gotten to that point. Like I was for 20 years in the health and fitness space and just didn't know what to do. How do you get that clarity? Right. That's like the premise. Yeah. Okay. So I'll address two things. Uh, the first one, this is what I would say to Carl. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily going to say this to your listeners, but I would be sharp. And for me, I would really appreciate it if somebody, if I came to you and I was listing all these things, I would really appreciate because I know myself well enough that this is what I'm doing. I'd appreciate if you said, Carl, why do you keep using this as, a, as an excuse to not take action? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you so afraid to fail? Because I know if I'm constant, if I'm skipping from one thing to the other, it's because I'm afraid of failure. If I'm, if I'm making excuses and finding all these things as to now I know which one I don't want to do, it's because I'm just uncomfortable with uncertainty. So I would ask myself, Carl, when are you going to allow yourself to be okay with uncertainty? Because we don't know which one of this is going to work. Like Philip's a brilliant guy. We can take his advice. It might not work for you. But at some point in time, and that time is right fucking now, you're going to have to make a decision to take action. So ask yourself which one of these feels the best and then be okay if it doesn't work out. Like, cool. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I agree. But then the, agree. Clar the clarity yeah. piece of it, right? Well, well, wait, wait. So, and like you said, if it doesn't work out. So all it really comes down to is take action on something, do it, test, see if it goes. If it doesn't, off the list, go to the next thing. Yeah. Maybe, like <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, granted, you know, you can get complicated and say like certain things are going to be more out there than others and blah, blah, blah. But- I could tell when I, when I got to 2020 and I started and I found like starting strength and muscle strength pyramids and all of that, and I'm like, Oh, this, this new way to lift for me. I also didn't know if it would work, but right. I'm like, it seems like it should based on what all these people are saying. And like, these are smart folks. I'm just going to do it. And it worked. And so I stuck with it anyway. Continue. It, yeah. No. And that, that's, that's exactly how it goes too. It's like, it's interesting. I was having a conversation <laughs> with a brother of ours yesterday and it, uh, it had to do with relationships and what do you do when there's a recurring conflict in your relationship? Like when do you sweep things under the rug? And when do you say, okay, I know we don't want to have this conversation, but we need to have it. And it, the bottom line is how much does it hurt? 
like how much does the pain of continuing down the path you're going on supersede the pain of taking action to potentially change your trajectory? And the answer to that question will give you the answer that you need, but you don't want to hear. Yep. Because we all know we like, if you're contemplating taking action on something, you're already at the point where you should have taken action a long time ago. And that's like, that's the way that I look at it. It's like, Oh, should I have done this? Yeah, of course you should have done it sooner. So like, they always, like we always hear better late than never, but let's let's not even make never an option. Like take yeah. action. Cool, man. Good. No, I just wanted to put it out there for people. This this is this whole episode, this whole discussion is about that. It's yeah. about taking that action. Yeah. And the only way you do it is identify it, and do it, <laughs> identify, right. do it, and then test it. All right, cool. So you know, you know, uh, you could ask yourself the le- the next question, which is 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 there anything what else you wanted me to ask um, that, that you we didn't, didn't cover? Ask. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny as we were talking, I had a good one in my mind and I should have written it down because I forgot it. Here's a question that, yeah, this is, this is coming to me right now. So I'm not sure where this is going to go, but I'm curious what I would have said if you asked me, what is the biggest regret you have right now as it relates to your health and fitness? The biggest regret right now in your health and fitness. Okay. Yeah. And the answer was in my head before I was even done the sentence, I would have gotten a coach a lot sooner because- the transformations that you, and again, I'm not, Philip didn't sponsor me or anything to say this, <laughs> shit, this is just what came up. The transformations I've been able to make on a multitude of levels as a result of our, our friendship, the bond that we have, but then your, your coaching and your willingness to press me compassionately have changed, not just my physique, but my relationship with food, my relationship with fitness, like food. I, I, do food prep almost every single day now. Like every single, like it's I'll I'll do food prep before I go to the gym and not like schedule wise, but if I have to pick one or the other, I'll do my food prep. And that was like pulling teeth before. But now as a result of tracking my calories, I realize just how important that is. But sure, I can say that my relationship with food and my relationship with fitness is so much better and I'm enjoying those. And that is not a small feat at all because even being a trainer, I would have to drag my ass to the gym a lot of the time. Now I can't wait to go. But like all that is translated into my relationship with you and my relationship with Jenny Lee specifically. Like I've got Jenny Lee on macro factor. She's a lot more conscious about what we're eating. And as a result of me feeling and looking a lot better, that's translated into me being a better podcaster and a better partner for Jenny Lee. So it's stuff that I would tell myself I could have done on my own before, but if I could have done it on my own, I would have done it on my own. So it wasn't until I got a coach. That means a lot to me, man. And and for folks listening, I think they hear this message a lot and don't take action on it. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> There's a lot of people well, like well, that. Well, yeah, because I, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, how long did it start me to... St- take me to start doing the shit that you told me to do forever and day ago and that I already knew I needed to do. But then also from, from other areas of life as well. Like I I know, and there's still places like I could have, I could be investing way more in a, in a business coach. I could be investing way more. Yeah. It would never hurt to have a relationship coach like JL and I are really good. So I don't know if that would, the cost benefit ratio would be there, but yeah, if you're constantly on a treadmill to nowhere, and you don't have a coach, the coach is going to tell you to get your ass off the treadmill and let me show you the real way to walk. So, yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I think we can't deny that having other people of some kind in our life that are supportive oh. is kind of where it starts, right? And yeah. that's what a coach is. That's what a brother is. That's what a, a friend, a really good friend who who isn't sabotaging you, right? Who is positive and, and with you on that is. That's what a, a online community could be too. So, you know, cause sometimes people hear, oh, they're, they're, they are selling a coach and I can't afford a coach. First of all, I would say like, you'll find a way when it comes to money to do things that are the most important yep. in your life and that are going to change your life compared to all the other junk we spend th- things on money on. But besides the money, it's just don't do it on your own is really the key message. Exactly. Don't do it on your own. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, this has been a pleasure. It was every time we meet on this show, it's like, it's a very different kind of feel and topic that I think Mm -hmm. is super valuable to the listener. And I hope everyone listening will take Carl's words and, and actions and thoughts to heart. I want you to reach out to him. I'm definitely going to include Carl's uh, IG, which is at Ignite the Impact. Because remember the, uh, the podcast is Hold on. I'm blanking out here. <laughs> I'm <laughs> because, so memorable. <laughs> no, because your IG is different than your podcast. Yeah, so yeah, t- yeah. tell the tell the audience the difference and so we can be clear. Uh, inspired by Impact is the podcast. Is the podcast. 
I tried to get inspired by impact for my IG and it was taken. So it's ignite the impact. Cause exactly. the sometimes line, when I want to IG you, I, I start typing inspired. I'm like, let me right. just type Carl and I it, it's my fault. to find I it. Should, I should have come <laughs> up with this idea like 10 years ago. No worries. Is that where you want people to reach you from this? Yeah. Uh, this yeah show? Definitely reach okay. out on there. Or you know what would be kind of cool to see too. I know at least on Spotify, they have that area where you can like, it pops up and you can leave some feedback right there. Right. Like when you're listening to the yeah, Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Q and A thing. So yeah, just ask a question. And if you want, like I've I've got the MMU blueprint. If anybody's interested in that, like it's a digital download, just shoot me a message and I'll send it to you. It doesn't cost anything. So and, and we, really do we have a link. For, do we have a link for that? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you a link. Okay. I'll send you a link for that. Yeah. All right. Cause people want to know where, where do I get this this incredible format that they can guide guide them to this exact process? Oh, the, the physical training manual that's well, gonna be earned. That the five well, I don't mean questions. the physical, you said you have a digital one. Though. Yeah, yeah. That one yeah, yeah. I just I'll give it away for free. I don't care. So yeah, for sure. So we'll include that. We'll include your IG. We'll include the link to the podcast as always. You guys know uh, where to find me, where to find Carl. And man, thanks again for coming on. Thank you, my man. This was beautiful as always.